Good, beautiful morning, everybody. Silas back again today. It's a bright and shiny one today. There's no breeze. It's a nice one out. It's a tiny bit chilly, but it's going to warm up good. Once again, we got a super busy agenda. I mean, it's just, this week has just been crazy. All sorts of stuff going on. Running 90 miles an hour everywhere I go. I think he's here now setting off a dumpster, so we'll go check that out, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to put in the dumpster. I am going to eliminate part of Tire Mountain. This is a gigantic mountain of wheels and tires. Now in that dumpster, I can't put the ones that have tires on them. I can only put the ones that are already clean. So I've got all these clean ones mixed in with them. And the reason why I dumped them all together is because I didn't know when I was going to sell them. And people steal them if you leave them out separate. So I mixed them all together. People always ask, why don't you take the tires off of these wheels? Well, it's hard to get rid of that many tires that fast and we have to get rid of quite a few already if you leave them on the wheels it's not an EPA hazard if you take them off the wheels and you have just a big pile of tires that's a major no-no so we don't want to do that so I figured it's just easier for me just to leave the tires on them we'll worry about it another day but we are gonna sell at least one dumpster load maybe two depending on how many we get in this load we have a bunch here and we have a bunch at the other yard but what I've got to do is I've got to go through this pile and throw all of them out of the pile that are in here loose there's a bunch of them there's a bunch on this side, a bunch on the other side, they wrap all the way around. And I just got to go through, and gather them all up, throw them out in the road. Some of them can't go. Chrome plated wheels can't go. And the semi wheels can't go because chrome plated wheels are 10 cents a pound less. Semi wheels are 20 cents a pound less. And they're a different grade of aluminum. But as you can see, this tire mountain is absolutely huge. It's about, I don't even know how tall it is, probably 14 feet tall. And it goes quite a ways. I mean, I don't know how many tires in this pile, but it's definitely thousands. But then the fun part is, is once we throw them out on the ground, I've got to go through. I just take a pair of channel locks. That's the easiest thing I've found. And I just snap the valve stems out. Oh, well, that one's frozen in the ground. There we go. Uh-oh, I smell a skunk. And I just smelled it too. I didn't smell it a second ago. Where is it at? There's a ton of animals living here. I don't see it. But anyway, well this isn't a very good example anyway. There's one there. You can see how they have weights on them. That one's actually a lead weight. Some of them are lead, some of them are zinc, some of them are steel. Here's an example up here. There's one lead weight, and it looks like a steel weight beside it. i got to pull all those off. Now obviously that one's still on a tire. Here's one here. Here's a lead weight. I just take my channel locks, and I obviously they'll be facing the other direction. I'll grab this and pull it over that way. pops right off. Once you rip the other side of the valve stem off, you come around to this side and you just grab a hold of that with the corner of the channel locks and pluck it out. It comes out super easy that way. I know they make tools for those things, but using a pair of channel locks is the easiest that I've found. You gotta go through, check them all. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just gotta be 99% perfect. That way they don't downgrade you on your load. There's a bunch of clean ones down in the pile. I'm not gonna be able to dig those out. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just gonna get all the ones on the edge. And then I have three truck beds full of them already on the other side. So we'll get all that done, and if we don't have quite enough to fill this dumpster, I'll run to the other yard and grab some there. But I'm thinking we'll have enough here to fill it, and then the next dumpster we'll put at the other yard and fill it up there. I don't know how much time I'm going to have to work on this this week, so it might be next week before I actually get around to doing this, depending on the weather. Now they're saying snow coming in. We'll see what happens. Ooh, that sun is bright. Man, this time of the morning is always really hard to walk to the east, or drive to the east too. The other, yesterday morning I was driving to the east and about blinded me. But if I have time, I'll start working on it now. I'm going to try to find somebody to come help me. It goes a lot faster when you have two people, but if I have to, I'll do it by myself. But now I've got to leave this yard, and I've got to go out and make sure that camper is ready to go because they're coming sometime today to pick that up. Boy, it sure is beautiful out here. It's just a beautiful day. It's days like today, I'd love just to take off and go out to the lake or the river or something like that, but not today. we got work to do. While I'm thinking of it, I know a whole bunch of you guys were wanting that 69 or 70 Chevy, whatever it was. And that truck is actually already spoken for, so I can't sell it. But I do have this old 68 GMC here. I don't know if anybody would be interested in it. This fender here is a little bit buggered up, but it's not rusted out very bad. I think there's a tiny bit of rust down here in the door. 
yeah down there a little bit and at the back corner of the door rocker panels have a tiny bit of rust but you guys know these trucks they rust out a lot it's a v8 truck i think that yeah this door is fine the rocker panel cab corner have a little rust but the floors are pretty solid it's a very very buildable truck and it's all original patina if you guys wanted to build a patina truck it will need a new windshield i believe is this a three speed yeah this is a three speed or automatic i can't remember now yeah this is a three on the tree but it is a v8 and the engine does still turn the bed's in pretty good shape somebody's drilled some holes and mounted whatever this rack was in there at some point in time it does have a dent in it but it's not all rotted out ah, i just walked into a tree limb once again the tailgate's a little messed up but it's not rotted out and it is patina matching unfortunately this came from that farm cleanup we did early in the year last year and the guy had passed away and nobody could find any paperwork on anything so i don't have a title for this thing i'd have to sell it on a bill of sale but if somebody was interested in this truck i'd probably take two thousand for it and here's the camper that we got to dig out today it's ready to go it's in neutral i just got to move this international out of the way hook onto this and pull it out front so he can back up he's going to load it with a winch because if i pick this up with a loader i'm scared i'm going to tear stuff up i know i'll bend the drive shaft and i'm scared i'll tear the body up on it so it's going to have to be winched on but tires are all holding air fine it's ready to go my impact has been laying out here for two days i'm glad it didn't rain or snow but actually this impact is such a good thing that i've left this out in the snow and the rain twice now it got snowed on once last winter and it got rained on once last summer I'm talking like downpour rain and I just let it dry out before I tried to use it for a couple days put it down on the heater uh, under the heater of the truck dried it out works perfectly fine still over a year later I've had a couple people interested in this whole truck but nobody's come through on the whole thing yet I do have a guy wanting to buy the wheels off of it he's trying to work out a time that he can come down here and get those then I had somebody else interested in I think the front clip I can't remember for sure and that's something else guys that if you email me and I don't answer you just wait a week or two and email me again because I get so many emails every day now. I get 75 to 100 emails every single day. A bunch of them go to my spam folder and so it's just impossible. Plus I get tons of messages and I just can't keep up with all of it. And then also a lot of times I will talk to somebody about something and they'll say okay well I'll think about it. If they don't get back to me pretty quick sometimes I'll forget about it and I'll sell it to somebody else. And I've had a couple people upset saying well I was thinking about it for a couple days but once you send me a deposit it's yours I mark it down in the system. But until I get a deposit I can't really hold stuff just because I've got so many people wanting things that if I held everything that somebody might be interested in, I'd never be able to sell anything. And spring is right around the corner. And when it gets here, probably another, looking at probably three, four weeks from now, from the day I record this video. So by the time you see this video, it'll actually be about a week less than that. We're going to be chopping a lot of noses. We're going to be going to town, chopping and chopping and chopping like crazy because the spring show, I think, is going to be a big one this year. There's going to be no mercy shown. Every colorful nose I got unless it's like a really 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 cool car it's going to get chopped
Okay, we're gonna drag it out. Cool thing about this is it's got that solid front axle under it. Unlike the newer ones, the newer ones have independent suspension. You gotta be careful where you put the fork. But this in here with that solid front axle, I can just slide the fork right underneath that, pick it up, and tow it out there on one fork. Super easy. Made it out here. I noticed this front tire did lose a little bit of air. I had that at 25 pounds and it's down to about 15 pounds now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery on the charger and get that aired up. But first I figure while I'm out here, I'll kind of show you guys this whole thing. Some of you may not remember it from when I first got it. It's 1967 A100. Automatic V8. It's got a 318 in it. It's got the bucket seats in it. It's got all sorts of unique trinkets up on the dash. Got the gigantic crucifix hanging from the mirror. And support your local Sons of Silence on the dash. Yeah, this is the very first year of the Balboa Survivors, or Surveyor, not Survivor. I don't know why I keep calling it a Survivor. Surveyor. This is probably the worst part of the thing is this back door, if I can get it to even open again. There we go, got to open it from the inside. But yeah, not having that window in this back door, kind of let it rot out back here at the very back a little bit. So all this is going to have to be replaced. And then it had cats in it, so when I first got it, boy, it stank in here like cats, but it's pretty well aired out now. But the ceiling's falling in a little bit from that air conditioner being up there. That's not a real hard fix. But it's got all the original stuff in it. It's got the original fridge, sink, whole nine yards. It's pretty neat in here. And it looks like this used to be a smaller opening right here. And they cut it out to make it bigger. And it's got that up there where you can person can sleep up there. And probably another person could sleep here. And if a guy really wanted to, he could probably put a couple kids in here yet too. So it's not a real big camper. I really kind of wanted to fix this one up or have somebody fix it up for me and keep it for myself, but I don't need it. I'd rather see it go to a good home. Still has some canned fruit. Ooh, what do we got here? Some fresh cut green beans. Man, if anybody's hungry, it's almost lunchtime. No thanks. I believe this is the bathroom here. Little tiny thing. It is big enough for a toilet and a sink. A little medicine cabinet and then the vent one thing that's kind of cool that i just noticed is this is actually a shower as well this is all a self-contained unit and the the sink head pops off and it's got a attachment on the end of it so you can actually take a shower in here as well i mean it wouldn't be a real good shower but better than nothing so that's kind of interesting to see that the guy that's buying this actually restores these balboa campers so it'll be really neat to see it get restored if you want to follow his progress and see some of the other builds that he's done you can check him out on Instagram. He goes by Freedom Vessel. I'll put a link in the description. That way you can check him out and see what he's got going on. He's got some really cool stuff. Once he gets this done, I'm going to be really tempted to buy it back. But yeah, I'm definitely glad to see it go into a good home where it won't just be parked in someone's yard like it was here. I, like I say, I kind of wanted to build it, but man, it would be a long time before I ever got around to it. And by then it would just deteriorate more. It was sitting out in the field where I got it. But he's going to actually get it in there. I think he's working on another one right now. But as soon as he gets done with that one, he'll get this one in and get to work on it. I've got about 30 minutes to kill. So I figured now's as good a time as any to pick up all these seats. I don't have the claw on the skid steer. So I just put a truck bed down here. I'll throw them all in there by hand and get this cleaned up.
I went ahead and grabbed the rake while I was here and raked out some of the grass from underneath the bus and around the front door. Threw it in here and lit it on fire. Burn off a little bit more of that today while it's not windy. I've mentioned this before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sheets of old tin and whatnot that I have laying around, slide underneath the bus, that way it'll stop the grass from growing under there. But before I do that, I want to rake out as much of the old grass as I can, that way it's just less of a fire hazard number one, and then also it's got to go out of there eventually anyway. If I cover it up with tin, it'll never go away, or it'll take a long time anyway. I burned off quite a bit of grass, but I've got to get back to work now. About time for me to head out. Got an old cutlass in for scrap, just as I was getting ready to head out. Let's check it out real quick. She looks like she's pretty rusty. You can kind of see down in there. It's all rotted out. Oh yeah. <laughs> nothing left of that thing. Quarter panels are rusted to nothing. Last tagged in looks like 99. So it's been sitting quite a while. But we'll check it out. Probably some parts on it at least. There we go, center console, automatic on the floor. That's pretty cool. Looks like the steering column's kind of boogered up, but it does have the console and bucket seats in it. It's got those cool vents in the dash for the AC. This was probably a pretty nice car when it was new. All white exterior and interior. This is kind of like that 72 Regal sunroof car I have out back. I wonder what engine's in this. I'm not sure what they put. I think this is a 76. I don't know. The tag has gone off of it. I'm not an expert on these. I don't know much about them, but it's somewhere in the mid to late 70s. Well, it's got something different in it. That doesn't really look like a Oldsmobile engine. I don't really know what that is. Can't really tell. See if I can identify it. I don't know what it is. It's interesting. I decoded the VIN number on the car and it says it's a 350 is what came out in this car. And that's definitely not a 350 Olds. I got a hold of the guy that brought it in and he says that it's a 403 Pontiac, which isn't a thing. So I don't know if he meant it's a 400 Pontiac or a 403 Oldsmobile. I'm not sure which it would be. I can't get to the casting numbers on the back of the block. But if you can tell by looking at this what it is, let me know in the comments. Either way, that's kind of cool. But honestly, I don't know enough about these to be able to tell what it is. But yeah, it's got some other parts on it. It's got a good grill in it. It's got three of the original wheels. Other odds and things. So I'll just set it out back. We'll worry about it another day. But somebody might need that engine if I can figure out what it is exactly. Either way, whether it is a 400 or a 403, I'm sure there's somebody out there that'll need it. And I just can't believe this went completely flat on me. That thing held air for a week and I rolled out here and it holds air for an hour and goes flat. I'm gonna air it up again about halfway and see what happens. Well, it won't take air at all now. So I have no clue what happened, but whatever happened was catastrophic. So I'm gonna try to find another wheel to put on it real quick before the tow truck gets here. The only slight dilemma I might have, I'm sure I can find a wheel, but I've gotta find one that takes a 19 millimeter socket because that's all I have. I don't have my other sockets here with me today. As much as I hate to let an aluminum wheel go with that thing, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Making enough money on the camper anyway, I guess I can let an aluminum wheel go. That's way too big of a tire. I hope it clears and doesn't rub too bad. I'll set it down and see what happens. I think if I air the tire completely full to where it doesn't bounce or give or anything like that, then I think it'll be fine. But we'll see what happens, I guess. We got about an eighth inch of clearance. So it's tight. Probably won't be able to steer it very far, but I got it lined up to where we can get a pretty straight shot right to it. So we shouldn't have to steer it much. I'm glad I saved two of the lug nuts off that Ranger because the original lug nuts wouldn't have fit on there. But. That'll get her, I guess. There we go, got it aired up. Just a tiny bit of clearance, but it'll be fine. Went ahead and put some more air in the other tires as well and make sure it'll roll good. Hopefully they'll be here pretty soon. They should be here probably within the next 30 minutes or so. And we'll get this thing out of here. And I believe they are here to get the camper. Yep, they're here. So we're gonna get that loaded up.
He's gonna get it all strapped down now. There it is, headed to California. He's gonna make this thing look like a new one by the time he's done, I'm sure. All the snow is just about gone. There's a tiny bit over here in the shade by these tractors yet. Which is kind of hard to believe it's still here. It must have been fairly deep because it's been 60 degrees for the last couple days. Yeah, these cars here were all covered in snow just a few days ago. I am sure hoping the mushrooms grow this year out here. I didn't find any out here last year. But we had a really, we had a decent amount of snow last winter, but we had a really dry spring. And the river's a long ways away from here. So it was pretty dry out here. So that's probably why nothing was growing. At least that's what I'm hoping. I guess we'll find out this year. If they don't grow again this year, they probably just don't grow out here. That's the thing about morel mushrooms is you just never know when and where they're going to grow. I never took a launch break really today. I did real briefly earlier, just long enough to eat something real quick, but I hadn't actually taken a break break. So I had a few minutes to spare, so I just came back here to walk around in the trees. You know, that's really the main reason I bought this property out here. I thought it'd be cool to be able to keep a few cars out here. I never dreamed I'd have 600 cars out here. Of course, probably a little over half of those are just scrap late model cars stacked up in the piles. But still, there's way more cars out here than I thought there was going to be. But I just wanted to be able to come out here and hike around and go exploring in the trees because it's just getting harder and harder to find places you can do that. There's just so much cool stuff out here. Like this old walnut tree. Who knows how many years ago that got cut down. But it's hard to imagine at one point in time that these trees weren't nearly this thick and there was probably a bunch of cars through here years and years ago. I'd like to get me a metal detector be able to go through here and see if I can find some old coins or cool old stuff. I find neat stuff out here all the time just poking out of the sand. I was looking at my Facebook memories for today. It was two years ago in 2020 that I came up with the idea, the concept behind everything that I'm doing now. I didn't start a YouTube channel or anything like that. I had a Facebook page and an Instagram page for some other stuff and so I just changed the name on those and I came up with the whole concept of what I wanted to do and being able to encourage people to get out there and find their adventure and find an adventure in just the mundane day-to-day -day life. Everybody sees what I'm doing out here and they, boy, they say, boy, that looks like fun. Messing with cars all the time. And, and it is fun. I enjoy it because I've taught myself to enjoy it, but it is still a job. And so whatever your job is, find a way to make it enjoyable. If you're not working anymore, if you're retired, find some way to find something enjoyable. Even if you just get a hobby of having a bird feeder outside your window so you can feed the birds, it doesn't matter what it is. Just try to find some sort of adventure. But if you are still able, get out there and find something you can do. That was the whole concept behind this channel when I started a little over a year ago now. So two years ago I came up with the concept and a little over a year ago is when I finally made the leap and started the YouTube channel and it's just blown me away. We're over 35,000 subs now. That's way more than I expected it to be. That's that's for sure. I was, I'm still, it boggles my mind. I've, I'm having almost a, a million views a month I believe. Something like that, give or take. Sometimes it's a little over, sometimes a little under. But a million views a month, roughly, of people watching me go out and mess around in the woods and mess with old cars and clean up farms and whatever else I'm getting into that day. So that's just really awesome. So thank you everybody that watches my videos. I'm really excited to see how much it's grown and I'm really excited to see how much it continues to grow. Like I said before, I've got all sorts of ideas of things I want to try and I probably am going to get a metal detector. I've got the cabin I'm building. Got lots of cool stuff going on there. I've got probably at least one farm cleanup I know for sure we're going to be doing closer to spring or probably middle of spring. And who knows what else will pop up later in the year. You just You really just never know with my channel what I'm going to be doing next. And the reason why you never know is because I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. You for sure don't know. So keep checking back. You just never know what's going to happen next. But thank you guys again for all your support. I think I got somebody up front now with a car. They just called me. So I better get up there and get them unloaded. Back to work, break's over. It's time to head out now. I'm just kind of walking around, looking around. It's so nice out here today. I'm enjoying this weather, that's for sure. I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and this branch that's falling over is still kind of alive. It must be holding on down there at the roots. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off and let it cure, let it sit for a while. That way hopefully here in a couple years or a year or so it'll be ready to burn. And that'll also clear this whole area out, get this nice and open in here. I can get quite a bit more stuff in here. I just noticed there's a whole pile of old firewood back here. By this tree, I mean, it's pretty old stuff, but it'll burn. Oh yeah, that'll all burn good. The smaller logs I can use on the inside once I get my stove, then the big logs I can just put outside in the burn ring. I did a little bit of research. I don't know much about Buicks and Oldsmobiles and, 
and a Pontiacs, that sort of stuff. But that 76 up there, that is a 403 engine. It's an Olds engine, but it came out of a Pontiac. So I guess a lot of Pontiac uh, Trans Ams use the 403 Olds. So I was kind of hoping it was a 400, but it is a 403. Oh, I'm sure somebody may still want it. Now, if nothing else, somebody will want that interior out of it and that center console, then I can scrap the rest of it. Tomorrow's agenda is I hope to get over there to the other yard and work on aluminum wheels all day. And that's going to be my number one priority is to get those wheels done. Friday, I got a bunch of stuff going on out here again, so I won't be able to work on wheels all day Friday, but tomorrow at least I should be able to spend most of the day doing that. I'll probably record that as a separate vlog, and I'll probably combine tomorrow and Friday together because I doubt you guys want to watch me sort and clean aluminum wheels for an entire vlog. That would be kind of boring. I wouldn't want to watch that. So I'll probably film a little bit of it, show you guys what that entails, show you what's going on there, maybe a little bit of time lapse, that sort of stuff, maybe a little bit of drone footage. I don't know. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Worry about that then. But I'm going to go ahead and close this one out here. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Kind of a random mix of stuff happened today, but got some cool stuff in though. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a thumbs up. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.